We're moving right along in this kitchen remodel. Just as a strong bathroom fan is crucial in vacuuming out the mistake you ate in a drunkle judgmental call at 2 a.m. on a Friday night, so too do we find ourselves in dire need of an efficient range vent. The lack of one causes greasy gunga to build up not just in your kitchen but all over your house. And incidentally, should you ever go house or apartment hunting, always be on the lookout for a range hood. It has to vent outside because if it doesn't, you will spend an extraordinary amount of time scrubbing everything you own. Nasty way to live. I'm Bootman, and when I'm president, everyone will get a properly vented range hood. So as is tradition, let's go over this range vent, which I assume is about 60 years old. Honestly, I love the design, and if my brain wasn't missing an action when I filmed this, I would have turned it on to demonstrate that the fan is unfortunately on its last legs, so we'll just have to make do with my ability to write words. It's as loud as a jet engine, and takes about as long to spool up to speed. Only the amount of air it pushes doesn't seem to be enough to blow away a mouse fart. To start, kill the circuit breaker governing the range vent if it's hardwired. Make sure that if you've got a glass cooktop underneath, put a sheet of plywood over it for protection. Undo the myriad of screws underneath. Taking the fan off like I'm doing probably isn't necessary, but I don't actually know how to do this, and I don't know how it's attached, so I'm just undoing screws with impunity. Eventually, it'll come off at high velocity. Ah, uh, shit! Yep, despite my best efforts. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. But wait, there's more! I literally just installed this fancy ass cooktop that I sniped from a store closing sale for cheap. I'm not going to go over in extensive detail how I did that, that's for another video, but just so you fully appreciate my anguish here, aside from losing out on a lot of money because I was sloppy, the lesson here is kind of twofold. One, I probably shouldn't keep cramming DIY in every nook and cranny of free time I have after work. Because as I write this, I'm barely over a stomach flu that made me fire substances out of both ends for an extended period of time. On the bright side, I think I've lost about 6 pounds now, so a stomach flu is a great way to stay in shape. Regardless, there's a bit of wisdom I've picked up on lately. Find the time to take breaks, or your body will find a break for you. And another. I hate glass cooktops. I hate cooking like I'm on thin ice. Rant over. I removed the tile backsplash since I'm planning on retiling the kitchen. For this I just used a sturdy putty knife with a hammer to cut through the adhesive. I also painted there since all of the cabinets are being repainted as well. I used my hole saw to make a hole for the power cord. Since the new range plugs into an outlet, I made a new one using the existing hard wiring. Using my multi-tool for cutting drywall is my favorite. Then comes the other fun part. There's a circular vent on this new hood, but everything here was set up for a rectangular vent. Ah shit, here we go again. I managed to cobble some random crap together at the hardware store that goes from circular to rectangular, but it's not an exact fit. I had to cut the crap out of it with tin snips, use egregious amounts of tape, then I had to basically stuff 10 pounds of shit into a 10 ounce bag. My specialty. I also stuffed a bunch of fiberglass in there for insulation. This will go smoother for you because you'll learn from my mistakes and make sure your new hood matches your existing ductwork, right? Once it was all jammed in, a bunch of screws secured to the top of the cabinet and it's done. Looking fresh. It's quiet, modern, and works really well. I couldn't really have asked for more. Now see that fresh ass looking tile in the back? That's next time. Thanks for watching.